Good afternoon and welcome to our webcast on deciphering short-term forecasts to make trading decisions. Just the latest in a series of live events produced by Trader Planet in collaboration with well-known industry speakers. Today is Tuesday, June 15th. Carla Tuttle, your host for today's session featuring Daryl Jobman, a senior analyst for Trader Planet. Web date and time and therefore any opinions given by our presenter may change without notice at any time. Trading involves substantial risk of loss and therefore may not be suitable for all investors and past performance is not indicative of future results. We are recording this webcast and it will be posted on Trader Planet so you will be able to review the material at a later time. You will also find previously recorded webcasts among our other free member education resources within our site at www.traderplanet.com. Our guest, Daryl Jobman, trades his own personal account and has been involved in the financial markets for more than 40 years. A decorated Vietnam War veteran, he was a newspaper farm editor and editor of several agricultural publications before becoming an editor of Futures Magazine for more than 15 years. He has written and edited more than a dozen books and courses on trading. While his passion is helping others succeed by teaching the do's and don'ts of trading, his editorial contributions to Trader Planet have really allowed him to take this objective to a whole new level. We're happy to have him with us today. Let's give a warm welcome to our friend, Daryl Juppin. Thank you very much for that introduction, Darla. Uh, before I get going here, I would like to do a couple of housekeeping items. And the first is always an audio check to make sure that everybody can hear me. If you will notice on your screen lower left, there's a little man has his hand raised there. There's a menu there beside him and if you can hear me just click on I agree and that that audio is coming through and everything is working okay okay looks like we got some audio uh, going out so at least you'll be able to hear what I have to say uh, and hopefully it will be helpful to you today as you go into your uh, a couple of other things there's a little chat box down there also if you have questions you probably won't know, uh, questions during the session but at the end of the session we'll try to answer any questions that uh, you might have and uh, we'll also uh, want to advise you that when we do get uh, to that point uh, of charts and so forth you may want to put your computer on full screen mode simply because it'll help uh, show the detail a little bit more uh, today we're going to talk about a um, well first of all I also I guess I, I don't want to overlook the fact that CRB provides the data that we're going to be using in our charts and I should have mentioned that uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, what is going on in the markets in general? I'm going to focus uh, the indicators that I'm going to talk about on uh, the the uh, mini Dow. Uh, we've done a bunch of other markets in previous uh, webinars, but I'm going to focus on that. But there are a lot of uh, burdens that are weighing on the markets today, and as you know, any one of these burdens can cause some kind of a uh, chaos in one market. It has an effect on another market. Uh, in today's global interconnected intermarket uh, world, a lot of uh, connections between markets and one can take down another market so we're going to uh, you know kind of talk about that a little bit but then show you some of the short-term indicators that can be used to try to get into uh, positions that will be profitable despite all the uh, ups and downs that the market experiences of course some of those burdens that we're talking about today the status of the uh, euro uh, I don't think it's just a matter of, of Greece anymore that's kind of yesterday's news but you have uh, all kinds of warnings about uh, other areas that are potentially uh, even more and bigger problems such as in Spain or Italy uh, Eastern Europe has had some problems Hungary has talked about its currency uh, even the UK so what happens in Europe is definitely going to be a factor throughout many of the markets of course, we also have, uh, as the press has made a big deal of the British Gulf uh, oil fiasco, rightly so. Uh, it's a, uh, a major concern, not only for all the whole oil industry, but uh, throughout the whole environmental concerns. The, the, you know, there will be global warming stuff that will come up. Uh, a lot of other factors that will uh, kind of be ramifications of what has happened in this particular incident. And we also haven't gotten rid of the debt issues, of course. We have the debt issues. We still have bankruptcies. We still have foreclosures. Uh, we still have banks being shut down every week. 
Uh, we still have concerns about the huge debts that are facing some companies. So uh, that's an issue that hasn't gone away and uh, you know could pop up again at any moment. And then the government has gotten a much more dominant role, as you know, that uh, they've tried to solve some problems. So there's been more government involvement in the banks and the auto industry, insurance, uh, housing via Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, uh, you know, which have their own problems. Uh, the government role will manifest itself, if nothing else, in some kind of fin financial regulatory reform legislation, uh, restrictions on oil drilling, uh, likelihood of higher taxes is always a subject at hand. So there are a lot of things like that that potentially could be burdens on the economy that, uh, you know, that we're going to have to deal with. And of course, obviously, the uh, economic situation has uh, shown some signs of improvement, but it's kind of a slow go at this moment. Uh, you like to be optimistic, but realism prevails. And so uh, if you don't have a job or something, your outlook is a little different than somebody else who may be able to uh, kind of be working their way through the yeah, system. So all of these things are going on, and those are all kinds of things, lots of news, lots of developments, but you have to factor in what does this mean for price action. It's very hard to forecast on the base of all that information because first you have to get the information, then you have to be able to interpret it, then you have to be able to put your decision, whatever that may be, into action. Pretty difficult for a chain of events that individual traders have to go through. But fortunately, we do have our charts. Uh, we do have software to analyze prices. Uh, we can't rely just on headlines or uh, economic reports, but we need something else to get an edge as prices move. And we need points uh, where we can trade, you know, where we can have some specific information, and we need tools to discover those points and then a way to assess the probabilities of what will happen with some uh, degree of reliability. Now, one tool that I have found helpful in uh, my analysis is uh, a tool called Vantage Point Intermarket Analysis Software. I want to make it clear, first of all, I am not a salesman for Vantage Point. I do not sell the product, any product, nor do I get any money for any products that are sold. But I'm uh, kind of one that looks at the market. tries to find tools that will help me develop strategies and trade and found helpful to do that. Uh, a couple of things the Vantage Point soft need to know. Uh, each point state and danger and play that affect the other and can sometimes have a domino effect. Uh, what Vantage Point does is a neural network process that determines the 25 markets that have the most influence on a target market and then they reflect the degree of that influence on uh, that target market to produce a set of intermarket data. And Vantage Point takes this into market data and produces predictive indicators that are using to dip typical prices. Uh, a typical price is the average of the high, the low, 